for your laptop for your bed. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, the main reason that I kept the spare pieces of wood that had to cut off and didn't just toss them, I'll be drilling here in my house on my wood table. Be very careful if you ever do this because if I damage this table, I'll most likely have my behind kicked. And since this is YouTube and I don't want to get on it, I don't want to curse that much because I'm pretty sure I'll have angry parents with pitchforks come after me. Okay, let's get started. As I said, I eventually plan on painting this completely black and so everything matches nice and neat. And I might just speed through this with my video editing software. Once again, I'm doing all of this on my own. There's no one helping me. And ignore that ping, that was my Windows Defender. Be very careful if you ever do that, because I have several times got my hands caught in there. And if this was a live stream, well, I honestly don't know what I would be talking about. Now, one thing you want to do when you drill into these is make sure that you use the right size uh, drill bit according to your screw size, or else it won't grab wood and you'll have wasted your time, and you'll have to spend more time fixing your mistakes. Well, I'm putting my gloves on because I'm working with wood, and, well, you always want to wear gloves when you do any kind of work, pretty much. Well, most people don't, but I find it good to do. The amount of times I got stabbed when I don't wear them is really high. And yes, I'm pretty sure some people are laughing at the fact that I can't put these gloves on, they're not the right size, they're about a size too small. First thing I want to do is get the screws so that I may measure them and get the correct drill bit. That is my cable tie top here they are, my wood screws. Okay, let's see. Considering I'm only throwing four pilot holes, I want to make sure that I use screws that don't go all the way through. Once again, because I don't want my butt kicked. If y'all like to see that, well, comment on the below and subscribe. Subscribe, you may eventually see me get my butt kicked by someone for damaging something. Alright, we'll take the piece of wood that will go right here. Now, before I actually work on this, I want to show you what I meant by having it like this. The reason I'm putting it at his angle is so that the fan can breathe better. As you can see, I have perfectly measured everything on this. Over here will be where if I decide to use a spare mouse for something like gaming or something, it'll be there. It'll be particularly heavy, so be very careful not to use too heavy of wood. Note this, please. I have never taken a carpentry class in my life. So, uh, considering I've never done that, I've done pretty good. Right. One thing I will do before I paint this is sand it more and get it more even and smooth so the paint adheres better and doesn't look that bad. Okay, let's see. I have several size screws. I might use the same screws I used. Yep, perfect. Oh. Now, these are the same size screws I originally used to fix my mom's dresser drawer on her uh, dresser, which is obvious. Anyways, the reason I had to fix it is it cracked straight down the center. Uh, vertically, and I'm handy with tools. If I can take it apart, nine times out of ten I can fix it. Uh, 
and I'm pretty sure I told y'all that we're using the spare wood as a brace because I don't want to drill all the way down and damage the table. Now, we got our screw. We're going to get our drill bit. Oh, should be this one. Alright. And we're getting ready to drill. When you do this, make sure you have it perfectly aligned to where you're going to put it in. That way, you don't have to drill multiple holes over and over. Now, wherever you put the bit in, make sure it doesn't wobble or you will not have a straight hole. And once again, be very careful. Like I said, I've got my hands caught in the chuck here a couple times. take the wood very carefully off here so that we may dump oof, the solid dust into the trash and as I'm pretty sure most of you know if you see my intro I have to use my kitchen for these videos and I'm not sure if you can see but it went perfectly through now next thing is we're going to put it right here change out the drill bit be very careful drill bits can get hot hot enough i burn myself on them then we're going to find the correct sized phillips head bit for the drill to put the screws in please take note do not go very fast when you put the screws in the main reason i say that is because oh, it can still split the wood. I go slow so that I may keep an eye on it. If it starts to split, I will back off, take the screw back out, and drill the hole a tad bit bigger as long as I have the bit. Otherwise, I will have to put it off. Said no one ever. Everyone continues to do it. And make sure it goes in the right direction. down three more to go you know people sometimes I wonder how you go about getting sponsors if anyone ever sees my channel and wants to sponsor me or just send me weird tech or something old technology I can try to find use for it I'll include it in a future video as you see that one wobbled as it went in The reason I did it that way was so that I can make sure that it's still stable and I don't have to worry much about it lifting up as I put the other screws in. And make sure you grab the right screws if you have something like this. I just grabbed the wrong one by accident and had to go back. I'm pretty sure there'll be a keep block there saying there's better ways to do that. You're doing it wrong. And I'll point them back to before in the video. I did not take carpentry classes. This is all self-taught and self-learned. All my computer knowledge. All my taking stuff apart from it together. That's why I said if I take it apart, I can most likely nine times out of ten fix it. Uh -oh. On, make sure none of the screws came out nice and smooth. I would say use countersunk screws so that these are not here. And we'll try to drill them in a little further. And they won't go in any further. One thing you can do, and yes, I know I'm about to use sandpaper on the wrong thing if I can find it. 
I can't find it. Oh well. The reason you want to use countersunk screws is because these heads stick out, and if your screws are not strong enough or you damage them, they'll become sharp. Now, to make sure that this is all nice and flush, the reason I have my laptop plugged in is because it's nearly dead, which y'all know. And this sits nicely on there, perfectly measured that one piece of wood. Wow, that wood is hot. But now that it's done, I can show you. As y'all can see, it's got a nice little hole right here because it's tilted. And I'll show you the bottom of the laptop. Right here is where the fan is to help it cool the CPU, GPU heat sink because the laptops are almost always going to be one heat sink that covers both. And it vents out this side. That's why I have nothing on this side. Now one thing you could do with this, app, which I already painted, which I can show you if you like, is, oh, you can put decals, you can customize, do a complete custom paint job on it. Quite honest, if I had the tool that probably would have gone for metal, but I like wood, it allows you to do pretty much anything. And I've heard there was even a computer case made out of wood one time, and I will be looking for it, so I may comment on it, and I might build one eventually. But now that we're done, let's go ahead and put these over here, out of the way, because I have a surprise for you all. Oh. Yes, I know. This will all disappear once I paint it, and I will be putting a clear coat on it. I have the surprises. I am resurrecting one of my very old, very first computers. Oh, say hello to IBM Net Vista. Oh, had an Intel Celeron in it. Most of the components were dead, and I have replaced them. One thing I, a lot of stuff I'm having trouble finding, such as the cables for the power button, the lights. Those are pro proprietary. Sorry, I don't say that word that much. And it is a really thick metal case. I'm gonna have to slice this out for put a modern pro PSU in it. It has an MSI board in it, which is socket 478. This will be the new power button. Lights up around the center, presses in. I'll be putting that where the old power button was after I figure out how to get it in there. Probably put a tech drill to it. But as you can see, my five case is a little already. Down here I'll be putting a nice little cage to hold SSDs because this board has two ports for SATA. Don't know why people call it either SATA or SATA. I'll figure that out eventually. Has two gigs RAM, one is OCZ, the other is just generic. No, it's a Kingston. Huh, didn't realize I had Kingston for this board. This is a gigabit Ethernet port. And here, I'll be putting hot swap bays. And oof, this front part will hold a nice high pressure static fan. And I am waiting on a new bracket and holder for the uh, CPU. I have not been able to find any kind of water block for socket 478. It'd be interesting to try and put water cooling in this case. But this was my very first computer. It was given to me by a school that technically no longer exists down in Florida. Uh, if any of my buddies in Florida see this, you'll most likely know the school that is. No, don't post it, or I will be highly annoyed and I will call you out on YouTube. Like I said, really thick metal, and it's really heavy. And that is the end of the video until I can manage to get the paint together for this. And today's video was sponsored by myself. I am new on YouTube. I enjoy technology to a very high degree. I love building things, taking them apart. 
I especially love showing that old technology still has really good potential in things. Uh, everything's paid for by me, filmed by me. It is, what's the word? It is, pretty much everything is done by me. Uh, all the technology I have either paid for or has been donated to me. I have helped out several organizations where I live. I will not name them because I have not gotten permission to name them. For example, some of the hard drives I use in my personal NAS were donated to me out of their computers from said organizations. Uh, this laptop, I paid $150 on eBay for it. Uh, bought a live keyboard for it, replaced thermal paste, it runs perfect. The only issue was the overheating, which is what my new little hardwood laptop holder is for, for my bed. This is what I used to use to record my YouTube videos. Right now I'm using a GoPro, which I won in a bingo contest at work. I will not say where I work because I'm pretty sure, well, no, not pretty sure. I might get in trouble. And Gerald was a Christmas gift. Bought this myself. Bought the screws. Bought this. Bought. Like I said, I pay for everything out of my own pocket. I don't have sponsors, and I don't have money to throw around all over the place, pretty much to burn my pocket. I have a budget of one hundred and fifty dollars every two weeks, unless I have a sick day, which I will not be able to get paid for. Unless I can cover it under vacation or personal time, which has to build up. Uh, or I take a day off and don't get paid. So, those days I will have very little to do. Uh, so, if y'all like my video, I ask that you press like, press subscribe. If you disliked my video, please tell me what you disliked about it. And I will respond to your comments. I will take your critiques well, as long as you're not a troll. And, well, I hope y'all have a nice day, nice night, whatever time zone you're in. And, hope you have, have fun, do what you enjoy, because as long as you do what you enjoy, you'll never get tired of doing it. Have a good night, y'all. Well, good day, it's daytime where I'm at right now.